from the heart of Wayne County, this is Wayne Goldsboro Television, Goldsboro, North Carolina. the middle of the week and it's October 16th. How about that? Gee, I hope you're keeping up because I'm having trouble. That's right. Up day. Yeah, it October is Wednesday. 16th. It is. Good morning. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Before we even get started, you're never going to believe what we missed. We missed on October the 9th, Wayne Alley's birthday. Oh. Yes, we did. So happy belated birthday to you, Mr. Alley. Yeah, well. <laughs> was I, it a good day? Well, I was hoping I could get past that. I know. Right he was trying to be sneaky. Yeah, I'm sneaky. Well, happy birthday. Yeah, it was a great day. It was a great day. And, uh, and thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah. Happy, happy. I'm only 28 and a half. Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's oh, see and what's I have happening. Some, uh, land in Arizona for sale for you. Do you? I hear yeah, you. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see. What else is going on? Not much. Well, <laughs> we always have a lot going yeah, on. Mark your calendars. October the 19th, right around the corner. Herman Park Center. There will be a fall festival. It's their annual fall festival. It is wonderful. They, it's from 12 to 5. Hmm. They always have things such as carnival, games, bouncy houses. Bouncy houses. Food, music. But this year, they've added laser tag. Laser tag. Laser tag. Mm -hmm. That's right. Tickets are $5. Come on out on October the 19th. Bring your friends, your family, your children, grandchildren. Love to have you there. It's going to be a fun day. Yeah. $5 and you get to do all of that. How often do you get to pay $5 and play laser tag? Not often. Yes. Yeah. You were thinking the same thing, right? Yeah, I was thinking exactly the same thing. That's right. Well, for older folks. Be careful. On, <laughs> on October the 25th and 26th. <laughs> Goldsboro Parks and Recreation is going to be having a haunted trail. A haunted trail? Yes, haunted I know you do trail. that. <laughs> is it an haunted trail? Haunted today? trail. Yeah. It'll be a Stony Creek bike trail. Tickets go on sale very, very soon. Very you soon. You can get them at goldsboroparksandrec.com October the 25th and 26th. So over the last few days, you have heard us give lots of opportunities of things for you to do the entire week of Halloween. You know, that's right. Mm -hmm. Think about it. I yeah. mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Something for everyone, Something. all ages. You know, and I, I had someone just a few days ago ask me about what you and I did last year out at Herman Park. Oh, Center. yes. Last, oh, yes. Well, maybe year. we can do the laser tag. You never know. Well, well, okay. okay. I don't know <laughs> what that is, actually. I, really? I'm not really sure what that is. It laser tag is when it's dark. You're in a dark area. I'm in. I'm. I'm like that a lot. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah, I, I and you have on gear. Gear. Where you can see in the dark. All right. And you have like little laser beams that will come out of this little device. It sort of looks like a gun, but it's not a gun. A it's just beam a device. laser beam device. Got it. And you're looking for people, and you'll laser beam them, which is basically a light just touches them, and, and then you light up. And it looks like you have been lasered, yes. <laughs> you it's light quite, up. You light up. It's quite interesting. And all that will be happening at the Fall Festival at Herman Park wow. on the 19th. On the 19th. That's well, right. That's so maybe great. you and I can go. You never know. You never know. That sounds like a lot of fun, I'd though. I'd like to see y'all light up. Yeah. <laughs> Our producer said she'd like to see us light up. And we will do that, possibly. We'll see. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can work that out. That's right. All right. Anyway. Uh, I did want to mention on a kind of a serious side here, uh, we're in the middle of changing seasons. We're in fall now, and of course, before you know it, December 21st, just before Christmas, winter will roll around. And of course, January, February, March are three months that you really need to be aware of the weather. If you're keeping track, if you're a weather watcher, you need to keep track of when the uh, weather becomes uh, lousy. 
Uh, <laughs> bad weather will often bring uh, freezing rain and or ice to the area, and when that happens, there's a good possibility you could lose power in your home. And if you lose power in your home, there's certain things you should have readily available to keep you, uh, to keep you safe and warm during uh, the times that uh, you may not have power. So I would strongly recommend you go to redcross.org, mm -hmm. redcross.org, and look at their list to make up a, an emergency kit. That's right, they have a checklist, your, don't yeah, they? they have a checklist, and you just, you just put things in a duffel bag or in a bag or just in a, in a sheet, put it in your closet, just in case something should happen and you need that. It. It's always better to have it than to not have it and need it. That's right. Okay. All right, well, let's go to our interview. So stay with us and we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. In the studio with us today again, our friend, Dr. Stephen Peters of Cherry Hospital, Director of Psychology. Hey, good morning, Wayne. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Hey, doing well. Steve, uh, always good to see you. You betcha. Happy to be here. Thank you. Well, in recent days, uh, I'm not sure when this will be on the air, but in recent mm -hmm. days, a tragic story out of Washington, D.C., about the, the mother suffering postpartum depression with a child in the car, and of course, at the time, didn't know what was going on there, but you know the story by now. A very sad mm -hmm. story, Steve. Oh, sure, sure is. Uh, tell me about uh, postpartum depression. What is well, that? You know, you, you, we kind of think about postpartum experiences for women, you know, that, that the first 10 days, following delivery for a lot of ladies, you know, 50 to 70 percent is what the research says, will have kind of a blues, kind of down, they're moody, they're, you know, it's, it's all that hormone adjustment. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the hormone endocrine system for the delivery has been at one level, now it really changes. So there's some pretty good reason uh, until we get all those hormone levels reset, kind of to, let's go through that one cycle kind of makes sense. I think people would follow that. Uh, to, to be a little moody, a little distressed, just having an infant in the home. Uh, if it wasn't anything hormonal, <laughs> the challenges of sleep deprivation and having a, that responsibility in the home can certainly be challenging and, and draining for people. Yeah. Uh, but but that's, that's normal. That's not anything we're concerned about. That's not postpartum depression. So, so when we think about postpartum depression, it's really, the, the heart of that is the depression. Major depressive disorder, we call it. Major depression is a major depression, is a major depression. Right. It's really no different when we're talking about it in, in this context, uh, in terms of the limited impaired concentration. You just can't focus, you can't think, you can't uh, stay on task. Uh, mood uh, being really beyond just a little bluesy or down, it's really, really m m the miserable uh, ex experience of that, subjectively experience of it. Um, things like disturbed eating, disturbed sleeping, too much of either or less, can't do either one, those kind of symptoms uh, that would be part of any major depressive disorder. Uh, and so it what, what the sort of the rule is on postpartum depression is that if this major depressive episode starts up within that first month, let's call it, four to six, four weeks uh, past delivery, well, that's, that's a, a postpartum depression, as in a depression that's been triggered by, by the, the, the experience of a delivery. Are there different degrees of postpartum? Are there some mild uh, postpartum? Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing and then more well, severe? There is that normal challenge, mood challenge of everybody who's postpartum. Yeah. And again, so that, that's like the mildest you could say, but probably doesn't meet the criteria. It's really not what we would say, well, they have postpartum depression. You know, uh, again, that's as high as 70% of women will have that kind of mild upset. Uh, but will, should, it should clear up. Uh, when a major depressive episode, you know, now there is mild, moderate, severe, but since we're already talking about a very major mm -hmm. shift and change in someone's affective emotion, uh, even the mild uh, variant of this is, is pretty serious. So a mild 
major depression is something that we get very concerned about. Is there another condition that uh, perhaps this could be compared to? Uh, similar, mm -hmm. uh, similar uh, uh, action, similar uh, line of thinking? Mm -hmm. uh, because the tragic story out of Washington had mm -hmm. this lady driving with her one-year-old child in the car right. in right. such erratic behavior, crashing into a barricade, uh, leading police on a, on a chase of all things. Right. Did she know what she was doing at all? Yeah, these, these uh, episodes or this level of depression can reach the point where a person has some psychotic-like or psychotic features. So that their thinking gets confused, they could be, have some very delusional thoughts, uh, things that just simply cannot, would not be true, uh, very disorganized way of thinking. So, so those symptoms at its most severe could occur. So we do have a postpartum major depressive episode with psychotic features so that someone is very disturbed. So that, that could be, there is a, a level of severity of this that, that speaks to that. How is this treated? Is there medication? Well, yeah, and, and fortunately it's very effective. It is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, d depression by itself, you know, again, not thinking about postpartum depression, mm -hmm. probably the, the, most of us think that it's probably the number one most prevalent psychiatric disturbance, period. Mm -hmm. uh, depression is something that's, you know, most people will experience, and even a brief taste of it, Right. from time to time and probably have the ability to get through it, navigate through it and get past it. When that's not possible, and so if certainly when in a postpartum depression, um, there's antidepressants and we have some very effective antidepressants, certainly some talking therapy to go along with that, sort of get the, the, the happy meal, the burger and the fries yeah. uh, is kind of the best thing to do. Yeah. Uh, have somebody to talk to, get that emotional support, uh, kind of think through what you're doing and all the challenges of uh, dealing with a new infant in the home. But at the same time, some of the, the newer antidepressants, certainly very, very helpful in managing some of these more serious symptoms. Um, so some of the symptoms alone, such as not being able to sleep, c can in and of itself make the condition worse. And so next, it kind of snowballs. Yeah. Um, just okay. aside from being depressed, just trying to go through your life and then stay up for several nights and see how things go for you. It's, it gets pretty challenging. And so getting some good rest. Um, interesting enough with postpartum depression, there's kind of two variants of that where a mother may be kind of too absorbed for such a thing as that. And you think about the demands of caring for a young infant. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have to be very attentive and right on them all the time. But there's such a thing as being too absorbed, too focused, such that the, the mother nor the child ever gets a, any chance to rest. Uh, they're constantly being checked over and, and done with and just in a very intrusive uh, kind of preoccupation. Uh, or the, the other variant is where a mother would just sort of be overwhelmed and ignore the child. So even basic needs and being attentive, it's like the mother just doesn't attend to the child. Is this a natural phenomenon or is it something that is learned over time prior to birth of a child? Well, it, it seems that it's, there's a pretty bi strong biological factor to it. Really? Uh, be, because the hormones are doing what they're doing and yeah. re resetting, readjusting. That seems to be a real strong part to this. At the same time, you, you wonder, are there sociological, psychological aspects mm -hmm. to this? Uh, sometimes mothers, young mothers, may not have the support of, of extended family, of their mother, their parents, to sort of help this. And you know, is, is it, a, is it a, a mother who's on her own? Mm -hmm. Or is it, does she have this network and support? And there's, there's grandmother and mother and aunt and sister, well, that's, that's probably going to be a little easier. And so it does help to have yeah, there's no doubt about the support it. of family. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for particularly a young mother who maybe hasn't navigated through this before, mm -hmm. uh, who doesn't have that support system and is kind of isolated anyway, uh, the chances are for, for problems seem to go up.
it seems that nowadays in the 21st century mm -hmm. uh, that there is better chance of something like that perhaps happening and I'm not trying to mm -hmm. to be uh, uh, to to throw water on this thing or anything I, it just or not throw water but I'm, I don't want to see anything bad happen mm -hmm. it just seems that with uh, military personnel mm -hmm. women in the military mm -hmm. uh, uh, who have children that and they're away from family Mm -hmm. or perhaps women who are traveling overseas mm -hmm. on business mm -hmm. or traveling uh, around the country on business and sure. are separated from their family. This could be more likely to happen? It, it could, but you know, sometimes, uh, particularly in the military families, uh, there's uh, more of a network among the ladies yeah, uh, or, or, or the other the spouse that's yeah. there. And I think uh, yeah. certainly for the armed s services, the, uh, they know this. Yeah. And so they're attending to that from from prenatal care mm -hmm. to well baby care, a, a better system it really attends. So they may get attended to even better mm -hmm. than those uh, that would be stateside or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Now, could it be in a lone outpost <laughs> far away from anybody? Right. Yeah, that's that's going to be challenging. Yeah. But in in bigger bases, bigger installations, they are pretty on top of this. And and, and for the most part, uh, you know, we have such good. Uh, prenatal care, uh, at least the availability of that if people access that, and which obviously most, hopefully most people do. And so they're, they're connected to a health care provider. And so as the baby's delivered and uh, if there is some struggle, some signs, there's somebody right there to say, hey, sweet, are, are you, do you, we need to talk about something yeah. here. You know. I see that. How important is the, is the spouse's role in, in this? Pretty big part of it and as far as that uh, safety net. Yeah. That's kind of how I think about it. Uh, it's time to step up, dads, and do your part. Mm -hmm. Mom needs a break. Well, yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, she needs to rest a while. And so that means picking up this little bundle of joy and you doing your part. That's right. And so that's, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of guys are able to do that. Sure we are, are in the, in sure the 21st are. century now. That's People cool. know that, and, and that's kind of cool for dads to have that bonding time with the child. You know, that is, you're right about yeah, that. That yeah. is really cool for a dad and his child oh, yeah. to, to bond Very cool. like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's not, you know, some dads, it's, it's a pretty scary idea. It is. Uh, this little <laughs> bundle there, it's, it's kind <laughs> of hard. Right. Don't want to break it, I mean, after yeah, all. Yeah, but yeah. taking care of their wives. Yeah. Uh, and their this young mother that that's that's the issue. So aside from rest uh, or mm -hmm. lack of rest, mm -hmm. what would be some of the other mm -hmm. uh, symptoms that one might, uh, might yeah, see? Yeah, certainly just appetite mm -hmm. can certainly be a, an issue. Either eating too much and just having no appetite. Any disturbance in that uh, is it kind of goes right up there with sleep disturbance. Sleeping too much, not sleeping not enough. Okay. Um, uh, that that mental concentration of can't focus, can't be on task, can't take care of what I need to take care of. Mm -hmm. And gosh, with a new infant, that's probably a big list yeah. of what you have to take care of. So it's pretty demanding, no doubt. But that struggle to keep up with everything you have to keep up yeah. with. Does it put more pressure on the on the mother to to feel like they absolutely have to do more? Well, you know, I've got to take care of the child. Oh, mm -hmm. but I've got to wash the dishes. Oh, mm -hmm. but I've got to, yeah, yeah. you know, and and, and uh, you know, and uh, my husband's not here right now, so I've mm -hmm. got to do that much more. Yeah, and he's that, busy and he's sure. working, so is this much more yeah, pressure it, on it's, it's hard. The mother? And so for 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 mothers that can get organized and say, well, I'm going to do that while the baby's sleeping, right. and, and kind of organize their day, and I'm sure it's a very demanding, challenging day. Oh, yeah. But there are ladies that seem to, to manage that, and the fact is, they need some help. Uh, whether it's from friends, neighbors, family, um, the, to kind of help help with those other things yeah. that that only the mom can do otherwise. Well, it's certainly a, a tragic story out of D.C. and mm -hmm. uh, you would suggest perhaps anything that appears to be out of the normal, mm -hmm. outside normal, uh, mm -hmm. eating too much, eating too little, not resting enough, mm -hmm. resting right. too much, a, a very depressive mood, depressive mood, uh, yeah. low energy. Um, and again, with a new infant in the house and, no, and not much rest for anybody, right. how, how could you have a whole lot of energy? That's that, right. that would be hard. <laughs> but really just struggling that way, the, yeah. those kind of symptoms of depression, that's when we need to be talking to somebody, talking to your doctor that you, you think that the, the depression is 
uh, getting out of hand and you, and you need some help with that. And, and be honest and open with your health care provider about what you're going through. Okay. All right. Dr. Stephen Peters is the head of psychology at Cherry Hospital. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. Hey, anytime. Thanks for watching. This is Wayne Goldsboro Television, in the heart of Goldsboro, in the heart of Wayne County. All right, now we're at the vegetable garden and we're talking with Peggy and Russell and Donna here. And folks, thank you for speaking with us here. Boy, I'll tell you what, this caught my eye real quick. What do we have here, Peggy? These are mustard greens. Woo! And turnip greens. And turnip greens. And turnip greens. And it's obvious the difference between the two. You can see this yep. leaf, and then that's that's another leaf. That's and look at these. Some of these are as big as tobacco. So I'm giving the farmers a run for their money. I'm telling you, this look. Well, how did you get these so beautiful? I mean, what's the secret? Is there a secret? No secret. You have. Uh, there you go. That's what's oh, under man, the bottom. Oh man, look at that. Oh, look at that. Turnips. Ow. All right. Why do they look so good? Tell um, me what the secret is. Water. Water? Water. Who ever heard of that? Good soil, good watering. Good soil and good water. All yes. right, what's the soil mixture? Was uh, Actually, this is growing. All of the uh, raised beds are growing, and the bed behind you are growing in complete 100% Goldsboro compost from the City, Goldsboro From the Goldsboro compost facility? Yes. Really? Yes. No Black soil gold. at all. That Absolutely. stuff is beautiful. All right. And we've done a really good job with it. Um, you do need to keep it watered pretty good. How often do you water? Uh, every other day. And how much do you water? About an inch per time. About an inch watering. every other day. Mm -hmm. All right, now a lot of people, or some people I should say, will, will, will water an inch a week. Of course, it depends on how much rain you get and how much uh, soil, uh, uh, how... Uh, uh, porous your soil right. is or how compacted it is but is that a good rule of thumb and an inch every other day um in this particular growing medium yes okay in the simply in the, because this dries out ah. it doesn't have the soil mixed into it the top soil mixed into it to re retain the water so the compost material will dry out faster yes plus the fact what about it being a raised bed does that uh, dry out faster as well not really because the raised bed is protected on the inside with solid plastic oh okay to protect the wood from the um from the ravages water, of water right. and dirt right okay right. so you put you put the plastic in against the sides. What about the bottom? Do you cover bottom the bottom? Is open. Bottom is open to underneath. Mm -hmm. So the water will just soak right on through. Went right on through. Every, every other day about good. an inch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well let's just take a quick look here at what right. we have behind us. Let Russell tell you about Russell, this particular Russell, what's going on here? I okay. see you got a little water going here. Sure, okay, and but we built this or had it built to show that folks, even if they get in wheelchairs, they can still have a garden. If you'll see this uh, a trough shaped underneath I so see. you can have in the middle you can have stuff with deep roots oh yeah okay and uh over, along the edges you can plant your shallow plants your herbs your uh, parsley what have you somebody in a uh, motorized scooter for instance can pull up here beside it can reach all the way across it and right. if this is all the garden they had they could put a tomato plant in one end they cut bell pepper in the other end, some salad greens in the middle, have fresh salad all summer long out of their own garden. Now, peppers and tomatoes grow well together, right? Sure, yeah, they do. All right. All right, now, I notice, I notice this material here. What kind of material you got here? This is shredded paper. The, uh -oh. reason, the reason we use that is because it's uh, cheap and we had it. And you can shred it? Yeah, uh, but just, this has just been run through a shredder. All right, this is, is, all right, this is, okay, newspaper will do the same thing. Newspaper will do fine. You can you shred can newspaper. Wheat straw, anything to keep the... Uh, Help keep the moisture in the soil. Okay. It, it prevents evaporation, and then you can see over here on the ground, we don't have any weeds. I noticed that. <clears throat> well, let me ask you about this plant right here. Okay. This is a beet. Right. And it would have been better if we hadn't had tried to grow it for show. <laughs> we should have put dirt up, up around it, mounded it up, and it would have been bigger. And well, that's okay. It makes a good dem uh, demonstration thing here. Now you have a uh, you have a. Uh, a hose here. Right, let me show you down here. That's even right. better. Got a better look at a hose over here. This is uh, I see. It's just soaker hose. Let me get yeah. on the camera. And over here is the head end of it. Made I out see. Of peat, 
PVC right. from the hardware store. Yeah. And the, the soaker hoses go under the mulch. Got it. All right, now soaker hose, if it, if, as I understand it, if the soaker hose is covered with soil or with uh, well, something to protect it, it'll last a long time. Uh, this this kind right here doesn't hold as well. Uh -huh. it's, it's made out of used, uh, you know, old tires. Right, that, recycled tires. Right, so that part uh, you have to replace, we have to replace every couple of years because you'll get a blowout occasionally. <laughs> and um, okay. when it gets to the point where you got more blowouts than hose, we replace it. Okay, recycle tires and blowouts. I got it. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> All right, now we have some beans here, right? Right, but the beans, we planted those about two weeks too early. Uh oh. Or the weather, uh, uh, they like the weather too much or something because we planted it according to the calendar, but they came off about two weeks ago. We've got about uh, more than 20 pounds out of this little bed right here. You've got already more than 20 pounds of beans out of here? Right, and three right. That's a lot here. of beans. All right. Okay. These are four by eight foot beds. Four by eight foot. Okay, and you can see how the soaker hoses are uh, hooked in with uh, splitters on the hose pipe. All right. Got a timer. Run to a splitter on a timer. Uh-huh. And All right. uh, before the fair opened and this was sort of a permanent installation, yeah. I had a fertilizer injector back there by the faucet too, and I could, with one timer, I could fertilize and water everything here that's not in a pot. All right. All right. Can we talk to Donna here just a moment? Sure. sure. Donna, sure, come. I can, yeah, tell, I can do the easy stuff. Tell me about your eggplant here. Well, that's a um, black beauty, and of right. course, this is a, what we call a growing pot. Right. Um, Peggy and Russell use these. I think they order them from a website, and I think they're like nine dollars each. These pots. Yes. That's a that's, that's a porous pot. It is, and the great thing about it is, uh, it's easy to move. Uh, and of course it's porous, uh -huh. and of course when you're through with it, end of the year, you can dump it out and store it and start all over again. All right. And of course, there's a beautiful uh, eggplant. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, a couple of there. nice ones there. Yeah. Now this next thing over here is my absolute favorite. I know, I was headed this way. This is my favorite. <laughs> now we all know about green okra, but yes. this is a red okra. Get out of here, it's really? Clemson, Clemson. Spineless. Clemson spineless. It's a spineless okra. All right, that's it right there. Yes. That is beautiful. We do think this is a hybrid. Do we think this is a hybrid, isn't it? This really? Clemson? It's not. Well, you can save the seeds and replant it. Oh, okay. The advantage is that you can uh, have a pod this large and it will still be as tender as uh, one of the little baby pods, which I don't see at the end, at the moment. But, uh, so you don't have to pick it every day. You can pick it every two or three days. Well, now I was going to ask you about that because with the with what I've seen and, and I love okra. Yeah. Who it, doesn't? Yeah, it but gets stringy that big. It gets stringy when they get that big and they get tough. Right, but these uh, that that longest one would, would still boil up fine. In fact, maybe. And did we eat some of these the other day? And they were delicious. We ate these raw. Absolutely fabulous. Tender, sweet, kind of sweet. All right. Do, do they turn your face red? No. Oh, good. Oh, and they do turn green when you cook them. Oh, they do? Okay. Interesting. <laughs> All right. All right, let's go back here with the squash. That's actually a pumpkin. I mean, I'm, okay, it is a pumpkin. But there's no pumpkin on it. Okay, pumpkin, squash, whatever. But there's no pumpkins on there. Right. All right, now, I do see some blooms. Is it, are, is, are pumpkins going to happen? Uh, it will be too late to frost to get them. Okay. But uh, we planted this. Uh, late July, and it really didn't have time to do yeah. it. Okay. This is one time that this all came from one seed. Well, this? The, yeah. these, this pumpkin yeah. plant came from one seed? Awesome. Yeah. Can you eat pumpkin leaves? Uh, if you eat uh, pumpkin blossoms, you can try Can you? Yeah. You can eat pumpkin blossoms? Yeah. Again, we're using the, uh, the grow pot here. Right. And I believe this is just a, these are Roma tomatoes. Oh, I love Roma you, tomatoes. You familiar with the Romas? Oh, yeah, I eat great them all the time. Mm -hmm. They're They're great. Great in anything. And yeah. of course, in the tomato cage. Yeah. That's a large plant mm -hmm. there. Beautiful. All right, now, um, if you choose a smaller grow uh, pot, mm -hmm. the plant will be smaller, will it not? I don't know. I think that eventually it would sort of stunt the growth to some degree. Uh -huh. So you need to always, of course, choose the right size container for the right size plant. But of course, and it's not going to put off the same yield right. in a smaller right. grow bag as opposed to uh -huh. the appropriate size. And of course, for accent, we have these beautiful moms. These, uh, mm -hmm. right. Peggy, how long have you been attending to this? 
<clears throat> we started this garden and Eddie Pitzer gave us a bump start and helped us out by building our new uh, raised bed garden so we could do some accessibility training for Wayne County Right. Uh, in March, March of this year. March of this year? March of this year? Yes. All right. There was a garden space, but we turned it from a garden right. space into in, something into that you can harvest and work with even though you have a disability. All right. Even though you have a disability. Now, that's all right. That's all right. Come yeah, back over come here. Come back now. over here. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're, you're saying that even though you have a disability, these raised beds are good for people to access if they're Certainly. wheelchair bound or if they're this one's a non ambulatory. This example. It slide right in underneath. You and can reach all the way across. Even if you had a shoulder difficulty, you can reach halfway. Right. Go around to the other side and reach your other half. All right. It's deeper in the middle, so you could plant the things that need a deeper root system just in the middle of your veg trunk and outside for the things that are shallower rooted. Outstanding. Peggy, thank you so much. Yes. Jessica, I enjoy the tour. That's I learned great. a lot. We have really enjoyed it. This Good. is beautiful out it here. Is. It's great. It's a great attraction for the fair every year. Uh, this is just one of the many projects that the Extension Master Gardener volunteers do for uh, in Wayne County. Right. And uh, it's a great uh, teaching tool. People can come to the fair. They can get ideas and learn about some different plants and new plants they can add to their landscape or learn about, you know, vegetable gardening. How they can, and to, to me, uh, the main attraction of it is it's something you can do in a small space. It doesn't take a large area right. to really have an attractive garden at your home. It does not take a large area to have a flower or veggie garden That's right. at your home. Mm -hmm. and can people, during the course of the fair, can people talk to some of the master Absolutely. gardeners? They, they're here, they, they'll provide uh, information about the gardens, about the plants, or they can answer gardening questions that you have. Uh, whether, you know, it's about, you know, fall webworms or, you know, different pests or plants and so forth, and uh, they can uh, help you with that. We've got publications here, soil sample boxes, all kinds of stuff. Wow. Available. All right, now, that's something I'm glad you touched on that. I want to clear something up real quick, okay. or at least mention it again, is soil sampling. Now, soil sampling is free, except the rules yes. have changed now. When, well, they are they, when is it not free? Uh, during the peak season, which is going to be December 1st to March 31st, the soil samples are going to cost $4 each. Uh, and what we're going to encourage is for homeowners to go ahead and do their soil sampling now or wait until after March 31st and get their soil sampling done so you don't have that feed. You know, Thanksgiving falls right before December. December 1st, so really we're recommending, you know, about beginning or mid-November, go ahead and get those soil samples in and don't wait till the end of November, uh, because actually the Thanksgiving holiday causes that deadline to be a little earlier. That's right. Yeah. So anyone who may have a question about this can call oh, Jessica. Yes. What's yes. your phone number? Uh, the phone number is 919-731-1520. 731 1520. We've been speaking with Jessica Strickland of the Cooperative Extension Service. And thank you. Yes, thank you. Oh boy, happy fair. Yes. <laughs>back it is a wednesday morning and i'm not going to say hope day i'm not going to say that okay <laughs> because he's not going to say I'm that i'm not going to say hump day. well guess what's happening soon what? among the list of the other 45 million things we have <laughs> offered <laughs> <laughs> we have a what fantastic chili cook-off oh, oh chili cook-off oh. and this is all a part of the community soup kitchen oh. of goldsboro oh. this is their fundraiser it will be October the 26th. That's a Saturday mm -hmm. from 11 to 2. And you have two options of ways that you can participate. You can get a team together and see if you can cook your very best chili and win that title. Mm -hmm. You can also pay $5 and kids under 5 are free. And you can come and taste all the different chili teams chili. And you can vote for people's choice as to who you think has the best chili here in Goldsboro. This is all taking place at the Center Street Jam parking lot, 132 South Center Street, right here downtown Goldsboro. First time they've been here. We're glad to have them back. Let's see. If you want to have a team, $75 is what your entry fee is mm. for your team. There's wow. um, entry forms and all that available at communitysoupkitchen.org. Or you can give them a call, Wayne, at 919-731-3939. What was that number again? 919-731-3939. <laughs> oh, okay.
chili cook-off, all the benefits for the Community Soup Kitchen of Goldsboro, Saturday, October the 26th, 11 to 2. Oh. Center Street Jam parking lot. Love to have you back. Oh, boy. It is great. If you've never been before, it is quite interesting. Every booth, every team is set up. They can decorate with their own theme, and they all do that. just mm -hmm. that. They have their own yeah. theme, and everybody has their own recipe, and they are all vying for that title yeah. of best or people's choice mm -hmm. for the best chili in Goldsboro. Yeah. Come on out and join us. It's open to the public. Five dollars. You know, I am, and, and that's, that is wonderful. And that is wonderful. I am really excited about today's program because one, one of the interviews we're going to be doing is with Dr. Stephen Peters. And Dr. Peters is uh, the head of psychology at Cherry Hospital. And he comes by from time to time. And we just, it's just two guys sitting around talking and boy, if if you know Dr. Peters, you yes. really it's he's just a nice guy. Wonderful. To sit down and talk to. He's so easy to talk to, and he covers a lot of stuff. We cover a lot of important things today, and I I hope you're able to stay with us and watch this interview because he just he's just got some great information. We like to have good information. Yes, indeed, and he's just and I've known him. Oh. He's a musician too. He plays, oh, really? he plays some bluegrass fiddle. How about that? How yeah. about that? Does he play that. on air? <laughs> does he play during your interview? Oh no, he does not. No, he doesn't do okay. that. But he could. If maybe he next time. His, maybe next time if he brings his fiddle. Talk with a little him. bit, sing a little bit. Talk a little bit, play a little bit. I like that. Talk new a new bit, twist. Play a bit, talk a little bit, play a little bit, talk a little bit. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> That's right. Oh. What else is happening, Mr. Alley? Everything. Woo! Of course it is. Oh, okay. Let's see. Creepy Crawl. Oh, yeah. That's an event that's going to be happening <laughs> October the 31st yeah. at four of our downtown restaurants. It's going to start oh. at 8 p.m. and go until midnight. Put on your Halloween costume and join us downtown for the Goldsboro Creepy Crawl. The four restaurants that will be participating, the Laughing Owl on Center Street. <laughs> Toreros. Um, what's the other one? Oh, the Irish Pub or Shamrock. Yes. And the new opening very soon mm -hmm. restaurant downtown Goldsboro, Matchbox. Matchbox. That's right. Matchbox. So everybody put on your best Halloween costume. Come on downtown that night. There'll be lots of prizes given away and gift cards to the to the various restaurants. It's a win win right. situation. Win win. You can't lose it. <laughs> That's right. All right. Okay, here's a fact for you. What is that? It might surprise you to know that 20% of all YouTube videos, 20%, one out of five, mm -hmm. are music videos. That does not surprise me. Well, it surprised me because that means that 80% aren't. Hmm. Four Just out of people five. rattling on. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> speaking of rattling. All right. That's right. All right, well, thanks for being with us today. We will see you again tomorrow. Right, Mr. Alley? Whatever you say. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.